Well, welcome to Christian Answers. My name is Pastor Jeff Short, and today I'm going to be doing a movie review of the Batman, the latest Batman movie, Joker. And first off, let me just say that this movie really doesn't have anything to do with Batman. I mean, you could have totally eliminated any of the Batman connection and you could have had a standalone movie called Joker or you could have named it some other thing like Arthur because the character's name is Arthur Fleck, Fleck and he is one of these unfortunate people in the world who everything seems to go wrong. He's one of these bottom feeder, feeder loser types if you want to characterize it like that and it just seems like everything goes wrong and then he turns violent and that's the way the movie goes. It's a very depressing movie, very bleak, nihilistic movie, but I wanted to see it because of our culture. This is a cultural movie. It explains some of the things we see in our culture and I wanted to just bring out some observations that I saw with this movie. I don't recommend this movie. It's not a good movie. It's not an uplifting movie. It's it's really a pretty sad movie and it is somewhat believable, but it does give a commentary on our culture today and that's why I wanted to talk about it from a Christian worldview. Now, right off the bat, when you begin to see the story of this really sad character, Arthur, he's about 35, 40, 45. I'm not sure exactly how old he is, but he he lives with his mother, uh, alone with his mother. So uh, where is the father? The father, as the story uh, unfolds, um, was some uh, boyfriend that... Uh, happened to come into his mother's life. The mother is actually a really pretty pathetic uh, character her, herself. Um, she was bouncing from boyfriend to boyfriend and actually allowed uh, the young boy, Arthur, this man, the character of the movie, to be abused by her different boyfriends. So she really wasn't uh, protecting Arthur, really bad family environment, bad family situation. But one of the things you notice in this movie, all throughout the movie, all these problems that Arthur encounters, um, all these sad situations, uh, there is no reference to God. There's no reference to God. He lives in a totally godless universe. Uh, there's no prayer. There is no church. There's no Bible. There's no Bible reading. There's no Christian fellowship. Uh, there is nothing transcendent there to help Arthur. Um, in a world without God, in a totally secularized world, it is a very dark and nihilistic place. And this movie brings that out. And why is that important? Because our culture is becoming more and more nihilistic. Our culture is becoming more and more godless, literally godless, as people rebel against their creator, as people rebel against God Almighty, as people are rejecting the Bible and rejecting the church and rejecting Christianity. We're living in a more secularized society and we're actually moving into a place where this movie, the setting of this movie in this Gotham City, the fictional Gotham City, will possibly one day come about if there is no renewal of faith, if there's no revival that comes about in our Western civilization, we will have an entire civilization basically of a Gotham City kind of setting. And there will be a lot of these kind of Arthur Flakes, um, Arthur Flex in the world. And so one of the sad things about this movie is it shows a totally secularized society. Uh, and these are the kinds of uh, depictions that we want to study because we need to know, do we want to be a secularized city? Do we want to be a society where there is no place for God? Do we want to be a city where people 
uh, can have problem after problem and have no place to turn. They don't turn to, to the transcendent God. It just underscores the need, how much we need God. We need something beyond our own puny human resources. Now, it shows here in the movie that Arthur is undergoing therapy. He has a social worker. He meets with her every week, I guess, or so. Could be even more than that. And he's on medication. It says uh, during one scene that the social worker noted that he was on seven types of medication. So you have this social worker, this, this social welfare system, this kind of socialized uh, medicine and you have him going in to talk with this counselor and it's really cold and impersonal she really doesn't have time for him he doesn't she doesn't really care about him it's just her job she's a bureaucratic uh, social worker uh, in this movie at least she didn't really seem to care much about him it was just she was fulfilling her thing and he came in because that's the system. You come in if you, if you have mental problems, if you have emotional problems, psychological problems, you come in, you see a welfare um, social worker. Uh, she writes down things in a book and then maybe you get your medication, state pays for that, and it's all a very secularized environment. But what happens is at one point in the movie, because the social worker has to break the news to Arthur that he can't see her anymore because they're making budget cuts, the state government, the government is making budget cuts, and also he will lose his medication. So again, the failure of government, it shows, and then once the government fails, Arthur has no place to turn. There's no other help, which is totally false. Because as Christians, we know that, first of all, we shouldn't turn to the government to, to solve our problems. And we should always turn to God to help us. Now, God may use the means of government, or he may use the means of charity, or he may use the means of family or friends, or other helps that we get along the way. But we don't ever want to see ourselves as dependent on government, and that's what the socialist communist uh, vision for the world is that you, you depend on government. You make the government sort of this false god, this man made god. You make government god, and then what happens when the government fails? Well, then people don't have their medication, people can't go for their therapy, they fall apart, and society descends into anarchy. And so we see a number of different things in this movie that really get us thinking, hey, do we really want to head down the socialist path? Do we really want a secularized society where people are looking to the government as if it is a god? It is a human man-made god that they worship and depend on and petition. No, we don't want that. We want God to be established in society. We want God to be something that is a real factor in individuals life and in the corporate life so that individuals are not these victims that have to turn to this impersonal bureaucratic government for help so actually actually I believe the movie is a good uh, uh, argument against socialism and against the big government uh, approach to society now it is a disturbing movie there is a lot of violence um, and again, the violence is amoral. It's, it's, not, it's not set within a moral context. There is no moral context in this movie. There are no uh, enduring absolute moral values because like I said, there was, there's no mention of God. There's no mention of church. There's no mention of the Bible. There's no mention of Christian fellowship. I mean, this Arthur character undergoing all kinds of problems he, he has no place where there are semi-healthy people. There's no Christian fellowship. There's not even a pathetic, sick, liberal church, the watered-down message of Christianity. He can't even go to one of those. Now, um, Christianity, like C.S. Lewis says, you need, you need full-strength Christianity or it's not Christianity. And why would anybody want to 
water down their medicine from heaven, from God. You know, Christianity, the Bible, biblical Christian faith, the Orthodox historic Christian faith is the medicine from heaven for our lives, for in this life and in the next life. So why would you want to take that medication and water it down and dilute it the way the liberal mainline denominational churches have done and produce, reduce basically church to some kind of political activism? And that's what's actually being done in a lot of mainline Lutheran, Presbyterian, and uh, even uh, some uh, mainline like the Northern Baptist Church uh, of Christ and all these Episcopalian watering down the medication. Now we hear in the news once in a while where there's some drug outlet, some pharmaceutical distributor that has substituted uh, prescription drugs with some cheap uh, watered down ingredient and that is deadly because people are counting on that medication to help them and when you give them a cheap substitute watered down uh, ingredient instead of the real substance that can actually affect their life and even lead to death because they're thinking they're taking the real thing when they're taking a cheap substitute but in respect to the liberal churches there are quite a few of these liberal watered down churches well Arthur couldn't even find himself into into one of those so this movie depicts a very very secularized society where evidently even the watered down diluted wishy-washy liberal churches have gone out of business because again one of the arguments against liberalism is if you have watered down the gospel to such an extent that you're thoroughly secularized why do you need a church why do you need um, a special institution in society that is given in other areas of society like the therapist and this and that so again uh, you don't you don't need the liberal church when you have a secular society because if the ch if the church is secular why do you need two sources of secularity what we need is the biblical preaching and teaching of the gospel that's found in the authentic historic christian churches protestant churches but arthur didn't have anything he didn't have any place to go no one to talk to and this is exactly the kind of mentality we see in many of these school shooters uh, we, we talk about why do these young men predominantly almost exclusively why do these young men shoot their schools and shoot their fellow classmates and go on mass shooting sprees we hear about this every year it's a regular occurrence well they're exhibiting a lot of the characteristics of this Arthur character they are alienated from society they're nihilistic you know Arthur at one point says I don't believe anything he doesn't believe anything um, they're still trying to figure out why this mass shooter in Las Vegas that killed I think some 40 some people in Las Vegas just took out an assault weapon from a hotel room and started firing upon a country and western concert crowd and they can't figure out why he would do that there's no motive he didn't seem to have a political uh, axe to grind and I've always been arguing since this thing happened it's because he's a nihilist he was a nihilist he didn't care he didn't believe in anything he had lost faith in all uh, institutions in society he lost faith in government lost faith in the church didn't believe in anything probably was an atheist and so he's just a nihilist so in order to get any kind of uh, his thrills he said hey I'm gonna go and shoot up a concert crowd and they're gonna die and then I'm gonna kill myself I'm gonna end so this is called nihilism uh, believing in nothingness and that's what this Arthur character eventually came to and we see for example uh, thing event after event goes against him and he has problems uh, he gets a job he likes the job and then he actually he brings a, a gun to a hospital for children and he's playing the 
part of a clown and all of a sudden the gun falls out of his pocket and he gets fired because of that incident, bringing a gun into a hospital of children. So he gets fired. Uh, he gets he takes a clown job in front of a going out of business store and he's trying to attract customers to come in and, and clear out the remaining amount of merchandise at cut rate prices and he gets mugged and attacked in the street by a group of teenagers and so he gets blamed for that and he is told he has to pay back the price of the sign that he was holding and he said i got mugged and they said doesn't matter you still have to pay the owner of the sign and it's just ridiculous so things go wrong in his life one after another now the problem is in arthur's case and in case an increasing amount of young men especially things go wrong in life and they have no resource to fall back on they don't have god they don't have prayer you know in in the former time when people would go through trouble um, they would go to their knees in prayer or they would go to the church and pray they go to the bible and look for answers in the psalms and record uh, in the bible is recorded all kinds of experiences where for example in the book of psalms david is crying out to the lord as he goes through all kinds of problems in life and so the uh, people before our time had all kinds of resources they could draw from spiritual resources transcendent resources not just human opinions human talking uh, therapy freudian psychology um, psychotherapy all of the medications that are now given for depression and and um, uh, discouragement and all kinds of stuff like this in the ancient days and even in former days here in the united states people turned to the bible they saw the need for um, the uh, the lord and they would turn to the lord and they would draw upon the spiritual resources that were in christianity and the faith but if we live in a secularized society uh, where our government is hostile and the institutions of our society like the academia and universities and colleges and the educational system is secular and that the arts and entertainment section of society ridicules and downplays and mocks and laughs at Christianity we are basically stripping away from society all remnants of godliness and holiness and revelation from God found in the Bible and, and Christian inspiration. And in its place, we're simply not giving people anything to fall back on. And that's what we see here in this movie with this Arthur character. He has no transcendent, he has no uh, help other than this cold, impersonal, bureaucratic government where he goes for therapy once a week and gets medication and on government health care but then that fails which all human aids do at some point and that was another message of the movie that uh, human helps human resources of all types even friends family uh, society neighbors they're going to let us down at some point and so we can't turn to them as if they were God. We need to be able to go to God directly through prayer, through church, through the Bible, through Christian fellowship. We're a we need to be able to turn to a source outside of ourselves and outside of society and of other people. Now, Arthur could not turn to himself because he was broken inside. And this reason why he was broken was that his mother was mentally disturbed as well and she had a broken home in which she raised this child and there was not an intact two-parent household uh, he never knew his father 
And we see again exhibited one of the fruits of secularism. You don't have intact families anymore. For many sections, many large cities here in the United States and around the Western world, uh, most families consist of a mother raising children apart from the father. That's a fact of our modern world. Now, why is that happening? Because the values of family, the ones that are taught in the Christian faith and the Bible, these are being discarded. And the 60s revolution, the sex, sexual revolution of the 60s said, you don't need families, you don't need, those are all just human constructs. Marriage is a human construct. You just live with whoever you want. You just shack up. And that's what Arthur's uh, mother evidently did. She just had a, a long series of boyfriends. She'd shack up with, bring into the apartment. Uh, these men would come and go, and some of them would beat Arthur, uh, abuse him, possibly damaged Arthur, uh, injury to his head or whatever, his development. So he, he had a, lived a messed up childhood. Well, I wish I could say this is the only a movie depiction of what happens, but it's really happening every day in the United States. Uh, there are huge cities, Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, Detroit, you just name it. You can go down the list of all these big cities. And this is quite common uh, that these women are raising children with a long series of boyfriends coming in and out. This is not a healthy environment. And children suffer. They suffer physical abuse. They suffer psychological and mental abuse. And Arthur was just one of these victims. He actually was a victim. And so you have the parents uh, absent, no, no father, mother, fi role model figures, no healthy family. And you're creating these angry young men. We see that happening in society today with a lot of the school shooters. And it's just a very bleak and dark and nihilistic environment. And you say, well, how do you know secularism will lead to that? Well, just look at the Communist Soviet Union in its day, and you look at the vodka that was used to sort of medicate the population and to provide some kind of comfort for the misery and the it's a miserable existence that this socialist state produced. And you say, well, that is what happens when you strip God out of society and you try to make the state God. It fails. It cannot produce what a good, healthy, solid, Judeo-Christian worldview produces in society. And what it does is produces a bleak, nihilistic outlook where morality is simply whatever happens to be the law at the time. You know, uh, when you play God, when you try to play God with government, then you have to play God with morality. And you have to basically kind of make up uh, what is right and wrong uh, by making laws and saying, okay, it's illegal to do this. And this is the state's decree. And that has to be functioning as almost like a moral standard. But again, people see through that and they go, hey, this is just a law of the land. It could change tomorrow. So really there are no uh, absolute moral standards. I can do whatever I want, whatever I feel like it. And so that's what you see happening in this movie. But unfortunately, it's also a symbol, symbolic of what is happening in the secular world, where there is no God, uh, no morality, no values that would reinforce the healthy life of individuals and family members. And so you get, um, you get, now it's really funny, at the end of this movie, uh, you have Arthur, who has just been on a murdering spree. He, he's killed a number of people, point blank, often just shooting them in the head or something. Violence, he doesn't see any 
uh, problem with violence. In fact, he laughs. Uh, violence is his reaction is laughing, and um, that shows that he has no uh, real internal value system. It's all just whatever strikes him at the moment. Well, at the end of the movie, we see all of these young men who take up clown masks and they want to copy Arthur and they want to follow Arthur and whatever his uh, sickness or his, his reaction to the world and the way he's been dealt, the cards he's been dealt in life, we see all of these young men surrounding him and they, they look to him as a leader now because he's resonating with, they're resonating with him and his life and his reaction and his attitude. That's nihilism, people. That is what nihilism looks like. And that's what we're going to see more and more in society. Unless we as Christians pray and work and talk to people about the hope of God through Jesus Christ, we need to begin to teach the Bible more and more and more. We need to begin to live out authentic Christian lives. Uh, what did Jesus say to his disciples? You are the light of the world. And you need to go out there and tell people about the good news and need to show them that it's not just you're trying to get them a ticket to heaven. You're not trying to just punch the ticket to go to heaven in the next life. You're actually doing something that affects the real world right here, and that is you are helping people understand that there is a hope, there is a future, there is joy, there is peace, there is contentment, and it comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ. So uh, this movie, I do not recommend it. It's a very depressing movie, but I believe it does reflect a warning sign to our culture to say, look, if we continue on this secular road, this godless road, this is where we will be headed. So I hope that it is a warning. I hope people heed the warning. And we as Christians need to pray that God sends a mighty revival that will change things so we don't end up like a Gotham City here and we don't end up with people like this Arthur character. Well, I hope that's been a helpful analysis and we'll talk to you later next week on another issue of Christian Answers. God bless. Mm -hmm.